Have you ever wanted to create a button in your model driven app and customize the experience to let people approve multiple items at one time? Well, in this video, we're going to show you how to do that. So stay tuned. Hi, my name is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works. And today, Power Appers, we're gonna show you how to create your own button in model-driven applications to override some of the behavior that, you're, that can be here from model-driven applications. Inside the products table, I wanna add a button that as I select these various products, I can hit the approve button right here to flag all of these as approved or rejected in one click. Previously, I would have to go to each of these products and then flip that over to approved and rejected on a product by product basis. And as you can imagine in the Canvas application, Ryan, this is pretty easy. But in model driven applications, this used to be very difficult. Now we have the ability to edit these command bars, whether I be whether it be on a grid like you're seeing right here, on a form like you're seeing right here, or a subgrid like you're seeing right here. All of those can be managed and changed on demand. So let's take a look at how we'll do this. Our steps are going to be, we're going to go and edit the application. Once we edit the application, we're going to edit the command bar for our products table. Once we do that, we're going to put some PowerFX code. Yes, the same code you use in Canvas applications to, to light that button up. After that, we'll save and deploy it, and then we'll see the results of our work in just a moment. So I'm in my, my solution area. And inside the solution, if you care more about that, you can see our other videos that walk through creating the solution. I'm then gonna go and edit the application. Once this comes open, a relatively new area, about a year old or so here, is on the left side. When I select a product inside the Pages tab, I'll look at my product word right here, and you'll see Edit Command Bar. And I can just go ahead and click the Edit Command Bar, and it will ask you, well, what, what command bar do you want to override? For the time being, I'm going to overwrite the main grid, the one where I saw the list of products. We can also do the same kind of exercise on subgrids and so on and so on. But we'll do the, the main grid for the time being, or a form, and then we'll hit edit. Now, whatever logic that you want to put in here, this is a great opportunity to do that. You can also use this to interface with systems that are outside of Dynamics or Dataverse, in this case, for your model-driven application. So if I want to hit a button and have it go out and look against Oracle, I can use this button to do just that, to get data and I mean, run some algorithms, run a store procedure, whatever you want to do to, in this case. Now, the first thing that you're going to ask, likely, is this is great, Brian. I can look at these buttons, and I never wanted to have that activate button there anyways. Can I disable it? As you can see right now, at time of this recording at least, that you cannot turn off the buttons with that with this, with this area right now unless you're, they're your buttons. So at time of this recording, at least, you cannot do that. But later, maybe, maybe that will be opened up for you. Uh, if you do want to turn off these buttons that are not, not your button, you have to use a third-party tool like Ribbon Workbench to do that. I'm going to hit the new button right here. You can make drop-downs. You can make split buttons that you're seeing right here. And then also do a command. So I'll drop my command in here. And we'll just call this the word approve. Once we have the word approve, I'll use an icon. You notice it loves it some, some, uh, loves some uh, uh, LinkedIn in this case. And I'll just do the little accept icon in this case. Whatever icon that you wish, though, you can also point to a web resource and bring your own icons over as well. All right, so we have our approve button. Looks great, right? Uh, then you'll see where it says uh, action. What kind of action do you want to do? Do you want to run JavaScript? Or do you want to run a PowerFX command? Well, let's go with a low code approach. So I'm going to hit open formula. Right now it just says true, which means nothing's going to happen. So for the time being, I'm going to save this for a quick second just to show you a few flaws in our work here. And we'll come back in just a few seconds here. Let's let, let, let this publish for a moment here. And then while this is doing that, let me go ahead and, okay, leave it a few seconds. There we go. I'm going to open up our application again. I'm going to do a hard refresh, control refresh, control F5, however you want to do that. And we'll see that when I go back over to products and I refresh again, finally caught up approve button right here. So it looks great, right? Until I start selecting objects and my approve button goes away at that point. 
So we're going to fix that. Don't worry. But I just want to show you at first, though, that the Approve button is up top. It does nothing yet. And that's okay, but we'll fix that in a moment also. All right, so two things to fix. One, we have to put some code in here. The other thing we have to fix is making sure that it only lights up when I check a few things to approve. Let's go back to our button again then, please. And then with the button done, we can put our code for the on select right here. But let me show you one more error that's pretty nifty. I'm going to hit the open command library on the top right. Now, when I click on that, it's going to open up our old canvas friend here. So in this case, the reason why I'm doing showing this to you is it allows you to open up other things and, and open the hood up around other areas. So for example, if I go to my database icon, we'll see our products table, table is already involved. However, I can add other tables here. Maybe it's a SQL Server or Oracle database I want to interface with. You can absolutely do that. You can also use it to take data from another table and bring it into this table if you wanted to. So you'll use that with the patch command to do that. I like coming here sometimes because it gives me a little more real estate to play with and sometimes a little better error handling I can mess with here as well. So think about how would you solve this inside of a Canvas application? How would you do a loop in a Canvas application to update values? Well, in our case, we're going to use a patch command to do that. Now, again, we can do that in the other screen or we can do it here. I'm going to do it here just because I was going to show you the other, the, uh, the Oracle and SQL Server connectors here as well. But I'm going to do a patch command to do this. But I need to basically patch over n number of records, however many records that you have selected. So I want to patch the product table. Once I do that, now to make that loop work, we need a for all command. And generally, you would put the for all command up in front of the patch command. If we do that, it's going to go record by record and do that update. And it's going to be visually look uh, odd to the user because they're going to see each record from turn from approved to rejected, and it's a little bit slower. So this technique I'm about to show you here, it will do it much, much faster, a factor of 5 to 10x faster, faster than the other for all command on the outside. So in this case, we're going to put the for all command on the inside of our patch command. So we have our products table we're patching. Then I'll do a for all. Again, a patch command can do an insert or an update. And what are we going to, for, what are we going to loop over? Well, I want to loop over whatever items that you selected that you want to update. So self dot in this case is going to loop over any items that were selected. So for all self dot selected, that gives me all the items that you selected and I'll do dot all items. This is the same thing you would do in galleries to count how many items are in a gallery. We can do this or sum or max or min or whatever. So loop over all those items, and then once we do that, we'll do a comma, and anything inside our curlies right here is what's going to be updated. So we want to kind of do a quick double check here. I, I, need to, I always kind of close my curlies real quick to make sure that my error went away, and that anything inside the curlies are what are going to be updated now. So I always make sure that there's no errors before I start to do the curlies also. Otherwise, it's really hard to debug and figure out, was it me? Was it some comma I missed or what? But now we can isolate any errors to this, the curlies now in this case. All right, so we want to change the approved status. There it is. It's going to be equal to, and we'll say, uh, because it's the approve button, uh, I've got a choice column called approve, I think it's called choice. Let me confirm. Yep, I'm just going to type the word choice because that'd be uh, colon choice. And there it is, approval choice dot, and I want the approved word. You can do the same thing for the rejected button also, just create a button, use the same code, just change the word approved to rejected. This approval choice you see right here, this is my, um, my choice column, my global choice column I have, and this is the value of that drop down box. And this is the value, this is the name of the column that I want to update. Okay, so easy peasy so far, all the stuff we've already seen inside of regular commands. I'm going to go ahead and do one more thing. I'm also going to notify the user that what they did actually worked. So I'm going to notify them and says, uh, you know, records approved. All right. And we can also count those records and say X number of records approved or whatever. We'll say Eric is approved. Uh, that is going to be a success. Okay. There we go. And I'll show that for two seconds. 
Now, if you want to find out how many records were approved, you can use much of the same code that we already, uh, we already used. Oh, let me go ahead and put that double quote there. So in front of the double quotes, we can use the same code you see on the left there to do that. I'm going to put a space there so it kind of it says X number of records approved. I will do like self uh, dot selected dot all items. And this will go ahead and, and then if I do a count a row count or count row, excuse me. I'm waiting for it to wake up there. There it goes. And I'll do a parenthesis. And when I close that and put an ampersand, now it's going to say how many rows were actually approved. So kind of a handy way of, of figuring out uh, that as well. Not required in this case. Again, a little semicolon for those who don't know. It says do this command, then do this command. All right, there is one piece of code after, well, before our notify that we forgot in this patch command. So let's go ahead and show you what I forgot. Now, even though it's no error right now, uh, we want to do the loop over. And when, while we're looping over each of these items, we want to tell it what record we want to actually correct at that point. So to do that, we're going to put one more patch command in here inside of this, open parenthesis. We want to now update this record, which means that's what I'm looping over at that point in time. Then we'll do a comma. And at the very end, we need one more close parenthesis. All right, that looks happy. So the piece again, the piece we missed here, we patched this table and then, for, then we loop over everything, every item that was checked. And for every item checked, we want to go ahead and update that record, this record that, that's part of the for all, with the, uh, with the approved flag. So let's go ahead and publish this now by hitting the publish button in the top right. Okay, give that a few seconds. And then when, when we're all done, we'll just go ahead and publish this version. We can either close this window or if we hit back, it's going to go back to the, uh, the main make.power apps. We can hit the leave button and we'll find that uh, after we hit leave, it takes us to the wrong location, but that's okay because we already have this already open. Now, it sounds like everything's beautiful, it's going to work. However, we have that one more issue you saw before where the minute I hit the, um, I check things, it doesn't show up. This took a little while for me to figure out, unfortunately. It was not obvious at first, but for that approve button, I only wanted to show up, even though the visibility is true right here. It says show. It will not show up when I start checking items. So the way of fixing that is to say show on formula, on condition, and then hit the open in formula bar, and this true is not going to work quite yet. What I want to do is I want to say, hey, has something been checked? So you remember before the self.selected.allitems, okay? Remember that before. But what I want to do is I want to write an if statement without my if statement. I'll just say if it's empty, not empty, excuse me. There we go. All right. If it's empty, it's not self.selected.allitems. Okay. Oh, not if empty, is empty. Ah, there we go. All right, so with this now done, it's basically saying, has something been checked? The, the, the explanation point in front, front means it's not empty. So if it's not empty, items gives me what rows have been checked, then show it, otherwise don't show it. You're now ready to save and publish this also, and then refresh your application. Oh, and it recognizes under refresh. I'll refresh it one more time here to get the latest version of the application. You'll notice the approve button is now gone. Well, why is that? Well, it's, it's that way because we put that visibility logic in place to say only show the approve button when this, when self.selected, which those three items I just checked there, is turned on. So with that now done, I've checked three items, one that's been approved and two that have been rejected. If I hit the approve button, it's going to loop over those items, it refreshes screen, and now all three are now approved. So really quick way of, of building your own custom button. Now keep in mind, you can put these buttons on forms, on subgrids, on views like we have here, and also the main grid that we have here as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. So please do subscribe to this to, to, to encourage us to make more videos like this about Dataverse and, and Power Apps and the Power Platform. This is part of our boot camp we do at Pragmatic Works, which you can find at pragmaticworks.com. We also do things like virtual mentoring to help you get unstuck from wherever you're at right now and your problem that you may be trying to solve. 
and we do hackathons where we build something together with your own business problem. Thanks for watching today and have a great day.